Welcome back, crew. It's Christmas Eve, uh, and I hope everybody who celebrates having an amazing holiday. And for those that don't, I hope you're getting some good relaxation in, or maybe some time with the fam, or maybe getting some time to read some uh, old TTRPG books you haven't had a chance to go over. Today, what we're going to be doing is a little bit of a recap on the year. Uh, we're going to be going over some of the systems we've reviewed so far, some of my thoughts just from kind of expanding my own horizons within the tabletop community, uh, as well as uh, what's coming next for the, the channel and uh, for the, the overall TNJ gaming world. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, but definitely, for, before we get into any of that, I wanted to give a, a huge shout out uh, to you all, actually. Uh, this is uh, my second channel that I've created. I was also uh, one of the co-founders of Dungeon Jedi Masters. Uh, but each time uh, that I create something new like this, I always worry that nobody's going to watch it. Uh, that it's just going to kind of be on its own. And I was surprised. Or it's the first time it happened with uh, the Star Wars community and Dungeon Jedi Masters. Uh, but I'm blown away with this one. Because I thought with me being on my own and outside of Star Wars, which is my usual field of knowledge um, I just didn't think it would take off but you guys have come through and supported liked some, uh, dropped us uh, some follows and just had some really 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 positive comments on there uh, which sometimes in the internet space you don't always see so just huge shout out to that uh, before we got to get into the, the the meat of today's episode but yeah, today I just wanted to kind of go over some of the insights I picked up playing a lot more TTRPGs uh, than I have in the past. Um, as I've said in some other videos, I usually I played a lot of 5e, occasional Pathfinder, uh, and Star Wars 5e. Uh, but I rarely ever kind of broke out of those two branches. It was mainly those two uh, as kind of where I hung my hat as a DM and player. So this is, uh, I've more than tripled, I think, uh, the amount of RPGs I played uh, just in this year. So crazy on that side uh and kind of along with that one of the videos we're gonna be doing a little bit later this month uh maybe beginning of next month is how to learn a new ttrpg because uh going through this has been a little bit of an experience for me usually i'm the um rules lawyer for lack of a better way to put it uh nice one though uh when it comes to like 5e and things like that uh, I've, I've played the rules so long i know them and that's got a little bit of a comfort uh but going through and kind of trying to learn and be proficient with new systems has just kind of taught me some new ways to learn an rpg uh which i want to kind of go over in the video just in case somebody's thinking about branching out but just a little bit worried about how they'd actually go about learning the new systems and getting up and running so that's coming next saturday keep an eye out for that uh, but yeah, this has been amazing getting to play from so many different publishers. But uh, before we get into all of that too, I do want to give a shout out to the three behind me. I, I didn't want to rank the RPGs that I played this year. Uh, but if you watch the videos, you kind of see the actual plays, you'd probably be pretty easy to guess which three are my favorites. Uh, and those are the three behind. Um, Alien by Free League Publishing. Amazing. Uh, that's uh, If you want to play a sci-fi horror game, if you don't want to use the Aliens universe, highly recommend it. Lancer, similar on sci-fi. I'm a huge sci-fi or sci like sci-fi and then sci sci fantasy and then sci-fi. These two are mostly sci-fi, but they're still amazing. Uh, but Lancer, if you wanted to have your own mech combat and have a mech combat that feels it's crunchy and you can go in and build exactly what you want. Like if you're an armored core fan, shout out to the new one from FromSoft coming. Play Lancer. That's like that's probably the closest you'll get to a TTRPG that emulates that. You can have some fun with you and your crew with it. And then Blades in the Dark was one I wasn't sure. I didn't think I would like it at first. Uh, I thought I would like it. I think I'd like it as much as I did. It's just such a free-form game. If you get good players that are engaged, and I had a fantastic crew when I ran it. Uh, just some crazy scenarios, so many laughs, so much player engagement. Which sometimes with other systems, with so much DM determined, that getting that player engagement could be harder with this how much control Blades in the Dark gives the players. I think it gives them a kind of a, a bigger seat at the table and they come back with crazier things you can expect and just can keep you on your toes and I think kind of work together to tell an amazing story. So those three are my favorites. We're going to go into some favorites from each system a little bit more in depth down the line. But I just wanted to kind of explain why those three books are behind because those are the ones that uh especially for blades and lancer i, I didn't think i wasn't sure if i would like either of them uh but these are the ones that kind of came through uh surprised me and uh it really became one of my favorites and one I'm, i definitely hope to revisit in the future uh and also along those lines uh especially with alien 
Free League Publishing, amazing shout out to you guys. Um, I haven't disliked anything I've bought from you so far, and I've bought a ridiculous amount of books during your holiday sale, too. So, uh, in 2023, sneak preview, there will be some more Free League books. Uh, amazing publisher, uh, quality books, quality systems. Like, there's no been no cash grabs I've seen from them. Uh, and, like, they've really, uh, they came from a publisher I really didn't know about much before starting this channel, uh, and now into easily my hands down favorite. I trust pretty much whatever they put out. And also along that lines, I think 2023 is a year, but they're making a Walking Dead game. Um, and I don't think I've ever mentioned it on channel, but I've been itching for a good zombie game. Uh, I mean, well, I love the Walking Dead TV show. got burnt out like most people did. Uh, but the zombie game piece is why I'm excited. Uh, I think they're going to knock it out of the park. And I heard it's going to have similar features to the Alien system. So it's going to be amazing. And once that's out, check the channel. That's going to be our game of the month as soon as I get my hard copy. Uh, it's a little another sneak preview for 2023 yeah it's just been uh kind of just my some of my thoughts this is a little unstructured it's kind of my uh just just a, a preview or look back for 2022 uh but yeah one of the things i really enjoyed this year was getting to play a lot more of the rules light systems than i used to um i as i said i was I used to be a little bit of a rules lawyer i like the good mechanics i like the crunch uh so i was pathfinder 5e to a lesser extent uh, those are kind of where i got my crunch on uh Beginning to play games like Blades, Into the Odd, um, uh, and some of the others I'm, that are blanking right now, Blades of the Odd in particular, though, uh, which some of the rules, lights, ones, you know, quick to get people into the system, quick to get people having fun. Uh, the rules support the narrative and don't get in, don't get in his way as much sometimes. And it's just been really cool to kind of get branch out of my own little bubble on that side and get to play some new systems and just really get to have some fun on that. And, and for any of the kind of the mechanics in depth people like uh, like myself, try some of the rules, lights, one. Uh, I think it kind of is a good creative flex if you're the, the game master on that side uh, but it also can be a good way to get especially if you're finding sometimes your players aren't as involved the rules light ones where they're not having to kind of think about what they can do and kind of related into game mechanics can really get the players at the table wacky uh hijinks will ensue fantastic rp will develop from it uh it's kind of a good way for both the fun side to get some of the hijinks but also i found that it lets people kind of dive into the world a little bit more uh and just really kind of have some cool rp with it but that's not to say i'm switching off mechanics i love uh, as you see with uh lancer behind me i love good mechanics games i just think that the rules light especially if you're a busy game master uh or have players who are busy those can be kind of good ways to Pick a game, get in playing without having to spend hours building a character or researching and all of that. So just another shout out there. I did a rules light versus hard um, video a little bit earlier this year, but just some additional thoughts on that side. But yeah, so let's go over the system three review. We've done seven games of the month so far, uh, which has just been crazy to go back through. Uh, we've just got a variety of players from my servers, a few new ones I met along the way. Uh, I just really got to dive into some just vastly different and interesting systems. Not all were kind of like ones I'd put on rotation every day, but each of them kind of like had something I took away from it. Uh, so I wanted to just give a shout out to the different systems and some of my favorites from them. Uh, and they're going somewhat in order. I did not look at the exact order where I came up with these. I think I'm halfway correct, though. But I know for sure, first one was Power Rangers. Uh, so the Power Rangers system uh, by Renegade Studios. Uh, Shoutouts to Brian. Uh, he actually came through. We, uh, Brian, the, uh, and I'm blanking on his last name, but Brian's the author uh, behind the system. And he came by to our live play. Super nice dude. Uh, and I'll put a link, he has a YouTube channel himself, too. I'll put a link down to that in the description. Uh, he came through. Really engaging community. Uh, I think for like uh going through it because i had a lot of questions with the power ranger systems my first one kind of diving into a new system uh and the community was super welcoming brian himself answered a lot of my questions which i don't think i've ever really got to talk much with the writer of a system so that was just amazing for me just how welcoming they are and how kind of a like open renegade studio seems to be on that side I've, i picked up the transformers book they made i haven't looked into it at all that may be a game of the month down the line so stay tuned for that uh, but outside of the community, I think one of the coolest things with the system uh, was just how well it captured that 90s nostalgia. Uh, I'm a 90s kid, 32. I uh, grew up with Power Rangers and the art. It, it, if you probably it doesn't hit as well if you didn't grow up with that generation of Power Rangers. But for me, I did. And like the art, the style, the the builds for the different colors of PC or of the Rangers just was all kind of exactly what I was looking for. Uh, alongside with that too. Uh, 
I wanted to use more of this dice system, which is the Essence D20 or Essence 20, I think. Uh, and Transformers uses it as well. But I think it was fun. I'm still worrying. I'm wondering about the math side of it. But it's, I, I like rolling dice, as I've said a ton of times. You get to roll a D20 plus whatever your other skill roll dice is. It's kind of a mixture of kind of how Savage World does it, but you still get a D20. So you've got a D4 up to a D12, and you roll that alongside your D20, and you use that to beat the DC. So I thought that was cool. I want to play with it some more. Uh, so definitely just got one of those interesting things to take away. And they got the exploding dice system too, which I love. Shout outs to them, Savage Worlds. I think Coyote and Crow, I'm blinking. I think they did that too, but I'm blinking on that side. Oh, they, they did. They did do exploding dice. We had a, you know, had a six. They did the six system. That I love that. Really cool. More games should do that. Uh, uh, Wizards of the Coast, if you're listening, find a way to make it work with uh, d and haven't, I've tried to figure it out myself, haven't found a good way to do it, but you guys should uh, use some R&D teams, because I think Exploring Dice is just the most fun system uh, in a game. It does skew balance, which we kind of saw in Savage Worlds, but it's fun. People like it. Yeah, so shout outs to Power Rangers, really big shout outs to Brian uh, and the community on that side too. Uh, but after we did Power Rangers, we dumped into a little bit newer of an RPG, uh, Coyote and Crow. Uh, so, and Coyote Crow is made by the Coyote and Crow Studios. Uh, I think this is uh, this was their first RPG. Uh, and this one, uh, if you hadn't watched the videos on that, uh, it was kind of a dive into, uh, it was indigenous culture, uh, but from the viewpoint of like a sci, uh, sci fantasy society uh, where uh, the Americas were never colonized and the indigenous people kind of lived, but there's a great calamity. Uh, and as I'm going into this, you'll see part of my favorite takeaway from this was the lore uh, that they had along with building it. It was just really cool, uh, really in-depth. Um, from what I've seen uh, from the creators' videos and on their Discord, really well-researched. Like, uh, they're uh, indigenous people themselves, and they really made sure that not only their own indigenous culture is represented, uh, but a lot of the other ones were, were kind of across the Americas, too. Uh, and this had some like, really, like, cool or, like, uh, just background lore pieces for it uh and, this, and it felt fun to play uh and this was one uh one of the ones uh i only i ran a, a pre-made adventure uh, all the other ones i kind of made my own thing well this one i really wanted to make sure we showcase the lore showcase the world so i ran a pre-made uh adventure and what i'd love to come back to again to kind of run my own uh adventure i little peek behind the screen i don't like usually running pre-made adventures i like to kind of have my own flow uh so i want to give it another shot with that one too i like the system I like the mechanics but i'd love to give it a shot with my own my own story so i can feel a little more at ease kind of making calls or just having to like make sure like oh am i doing that right uh but yeah that's just a little peek behind the screen there but Really cool system, really cool lore. I highly recommend checking them out. They're a new company. Uh, they're uh, and this is their I think their second year out maybe. Uh, but pick it up. Amazing artwork uh, and definitely kind of a, a cool cause behind it too. After that, we got into Lancer uh, behind me. Uh, so Lancer was our third game of the month. Uh, and shout outs to this community too. Uh, they definitely, they were very open and welcoming too, but this community comes out in force. I uh, really like you guys. Uh, Lancer gave me the biggest bump uh, when, when I was first starting out uh, with new viewers. A lot of you kind of came on board during that period. So shout outs to that. I truly appreciate that. It was kind of crazy seeing those were the, uh, the highest kind of viewed videos at the time. It was just really cool seeing those come in. So huge appreciations to you on that side uh but overall i just love this system uh this was uh it kind of hit the right crunch side for me because i love crunch and it hit like, it was a fun crunch it was customizable uh if you've watched me before you'll know i've kind of a I'm, I'm a little bit over class systems i love classless systems and i like the way they did theirs where you have different manufacturers you can buy things from you can kind of build out your uh your mech that way as you level up and gain new licenses and things like that, or I shouldn't say, as you gain new licenses, not level up. Uh, but it was just really cool on that side. Uh, the mechanics seemed to flow well in the game that we played. This is another one I want to get, I want to get another, run another game, or either play another game with Lancer, because I had so many different mech ideas and so many different things that I wanted to build out with it. Uh, so that's definitely what we're going to be revisiting in the future. And actually, this upcoming Wednesday, we're going to be doing a video on their uh, CopCon system. And what CopCon is, it's like their D&D Beyond for any of our five years. Uh, it's a website you can go to. It has a lot of their resources on there. It's free, completely free, uh, super free. I want to say that again because it's very comparable. It's well-made, comparable to D&D Beyond. It's free. It has all the resources you need to build a PC and a mech on there, uh, as well as some of the rules and resources. 
super well designed. Uh, so last time I built one, we kind of built it by hand uh, using uh, R20 as our character sheet. Uh, this time we're probably going to build a PC on there uh, and a PC and a Mac, uh, as well as to go over some of the cool features on CompCon. So stay tuned for that because it's a really cool resource. And it, did I say it's free? So check it out. It's shout outs. I don't know. I don't think I don't think it's official. It may be official. I'll, and I'll check before the video. I think I'm not sure if it's official or not. But shout out to whoever made that. It's super cool. Uh, so after we did Lancer, uh, we went into the One Ring. Uh, the One Ring was a cool one. Uh, the One Ring was one of the ones, uh, the only ones, actually, I did a solo play with. Uh, and the Strider mode is sick. Uh, if you've ever uh, have trouble finding people to play at your table, like I did, uh, I think that was July or the summer, uh, the holidays and all of that, I could not get a good table out of my crew going. So I'm like, they got Strider mode. Let's, let's play by myself. Uh, it's really fun, uh, especially if you want to flex your creative muscles as a game master. Highly recommend doing that. It just, it, it flowed super well. Those are probably the most nervous I've been to do a stream before uh, because I, I was just, it was just completely me, but uh, it was really cool. A lot of fun. Uh, the system itself too, like outside of Strider Mode, Strider Mode, pick that up. It's like five bucks. Go pick it up. Uh, especially if you already have the One Ring, I don't have that book all there. That was, that was, if I had more space on my table, the One Ring would be up there too. Uh, but yeah, go pick it up. Uh, go pick up the One Ring, go pick up Strider Mode. Uh, it's just a really cool system to be able to play by yourself and get to see uh, it's going to flex your creative muscles uh, and get a game going, even if you can't get players at the table. Uh, which, kind of like outside of that, uh, is a little bit interesting. Because like with the 5e, I've never struggled getting players to the table. Uh, but going to some of the newer uh, other systems, it's kind of a... A lot of players aren't interested in learning new RPGs. So you know, it was kind of an interesting flip because it's a game master. Usually I'd say, like, hey, who wants to play? And I usually get like a, a handful of people in there. Uh, but some of the other ones I have, luckily a lot of my, my crew loves to learn new TTRPGs. So you saw probably if you went through and watched all of our uh, Game of the Month actual plays, a lot of uh, similar faces. But yeah, it's definitely one of those things uh, that's a little bit of a shock if you're coming from the 5e world. I uh, just expect to kind of float with uh, just easily find a crew to fill out your table. But definitely, One Ring, best way to play in Middle Earth. Uh, they had some, I loved all their travel mechanics. Uh, I've been interesting. I, I haven't been playing much 5e, but I've been debating buying Free League's 5e book just to see, because they did a, a, a One Ring 5e, just to see how they brought the travel mechanics to 5e, because I love them. I was thinking about homebrewing my own way into them, uh, but I trust Free League, and I think they probably did an amazing job with the 5e one, so... If somebody's picked it up, let me know in the comments how that is. Because, like, I was literally, I bought, like, four books from Free League when they did their holiday sale. It's like, I was, my finger was hovering all over that one. Haven't picked it up yet, but I probably plan on doing it because I like that system. Combat was fast and dynamic, uh, especially because it was me playing against me, and I was worried about it would not be fast and dynamic, but it was cool. Little bit, and as I said, this is one of my thorns, but a little bit simplistic. But especially if you're doing Strider mode or for even just a regular table, uh, if you want to get more into the RP, the exploration pieces, which I feel like is more the essence behind Lord of the Rings, fantastic. Uh, and after we did that, we had uh, this is my uh. Uh, my travel month, uh, my wife and I had our five-year anniversary, so it was a short month. I was out uh, the pretty much all of September, and we did a short game, End of the Odd. Uh, another one, oh, this one's being uh, distributed by Three League. I had a different writer, and I'm blanking on their name, Electro Electric Bastion Land, which I think is their publisher, or the, the writer team, and the other sequel they had to it. But End of the Odd was sweet. Cool artwork, but my favorite thing with this one is it's the perfect pickup game. Uh, that and Karen, which is based off into the ad, uh, it's just one of those ones that if people cancel uh, and you're like, oh, I still like want to play a game today, and you've got some still some of your players that are interested. Pick up into the ad, pick up Karen. Karen's free, and I'll throw a link into that too. Uh, but pick up one of those two. Show them the system. They can learn the system in like five, ten minutes. Build a PC in five minutes. Uh, and be ready to play and you can get a good game going and not have a session go to waste. Uh, so really, truly recommend this game. Uh, like this one, um, I almost put it up here as well. Because uh, this is, it's, it's simplistic. Uh, it's not like anything too crazy. But it's just so easy to learn. It has fun elements with it. Uh, it's crazy cool artwork and uh, kind of uh, lore behind the world. Uh, but it's just one of the perfect ones for getting into the game, playing, and having fun. Uh, without having to spend hours building a character or learning the system. You just kind of pick up, play, and go. Which is so rare for a tabletop RPG. So amazing shout Shout outs to the the end of the odd system and Karen as well. Uh, along with that, uh, we've got the uh, so after that 
we went into Blades. Uh, Blades, you see that behind me? That was one of the, truly one of the biggest surprises. And one of my favorite pieces with this, because sometimes uh, the Powered by the Apocalypse games aren't my, don't, don't always jive with me, I'll say. But this one, it's like, they say it's a PPTA, but I feel like it like, expands upon that concept so much, it's almost like its own beast. So truly, uh, kind of a fun one, but really the biggest thing is how much control and engagement, control it gives the players and how much engagement that builds. The flashback systems were amazing. Uh, the circle systems, uh, as you kind of go through uh, and get different threats and successes was really fun uh and just so many different things that players could do to build the world out with you uh, it kind of felt like uh, it was just it really makes the dm feel like a player as well which is just really cool because a lot of times the dm you're kind of surprised how your players will act but you know what the the scenario is with blades of the dark you sometimes you're truly surprised what they come up with, with their flashbacks and how they change the scenarios and how everything flows and i love the devil's bargain and kind of pushing the dice and all of that uh it was it's just really cool i liked that uh if you haven't picked up Blades of the Dark, pick that one up. Uh, especially if you're like worried about getting your players engaged. I think this system, more than any that I've played, has just really cool ways to... Uh, this is so many different tools built in that your players, unless you've just got a bad table of players, they can't help but be engaged and start participating and bringing their, kind of their end of the story in, too. Oh, so after we did Blades, uh, we went into Alien. Uh, so Alien, another one of my favorites. I love sci-fi. I love the, uh, the Alien franchise as a movie. Uh, and this game does sci-fi horror like nobody else. Uh, if you want to play sci-fi horror, don't try to twist 5e. Don't try to twist another system. Pick up Alien. And one of the big things, too, because uh, it's like branded towards the Alien movie franchise, but they could have just put sci-fi horror game on it and it would have like been equally as true. Because it's just, you could, like, while it's branded to Alien, you could easily tweak it, tweak the weapons, tweak some of the naming conventions uh, and use it for any other like genre or your own homebrew world. Uh, I I was hoping to get some players during the holidays, but it was it just did not work out. I wanted to do a Star Wars version of it. Uh, with Dungeon Jedi Masters, I did a little one-shot uh, for kind of a horror one-shot. And I uh, was Star Wars 5e, and I wanted to tweak it to Alien because I feel like this is supposed to be the system to do it in. So stay tuned for that. That's coming soon. I just need to get, uh, we need to get through the holidays. I need to get my players back. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But uh, Alien, super sweet. If you like horror, if you like sci-fi, pick this up. Even if you don't like sci-fi, this can be tweaked. Uh, like their stress mechanic system can be tweaked to like, regular horror pretty easily. Uh, so check that out, uh, and kind of uh, another sneak preview, I'm not sure when we'll be playing it, uh, but I've been a little bit of a horror itch lately, and I've never played Call of Cthulhu, so Call of Cthulhu will be one of our games of the month, uh, but I make like a guest DM for that one, because it's one of the ones I've really wanted to play, so it's definitely going to be one of our games of the month, but it may be one of the few I'm, not, I'm on the other side of the screen, so uh, stay tuned for that too. But after we did Alien, we did our last game of the month uh, for 2022, Savage Worlds, which the biggest takeaway from this system is just how much you can customize it. It's just like a truly, like, the, and this it was designed to be built into your setting, built into your homebrew, uh, which is an amazing feature because a lot of game masters, myself included, uh, will spend so much time trying to tweak a system to make it fit what you're trying to do versus having a system like this where it's designed to be tweaked and you're not bending and break it and pushing a, a square pug into a round hole uh you can just kind of go into it and build out exactly where you want exactly what you're looking for so check that out highly recommend savage worlds too especially if you have a setting in mind but you're not sure what mechanics you need for it uh because this could really fit that well and they have a pretty fleshed out mechanic system i did not know how um kind of crunchy like i probably know what it is uh it's kind of like, probably can if you looked at it, similar in comparison to 5e with level of crunch. So it's not like a, a Lancer or a Pathfinder, but uh, it definitely has a good bit of crunch there. Uh, I, initially, I thought it was more of a rules light system before picking it up. So uh, that was definitely a little bit of a shock on that side. But they've got a lot of cool things built into there. Like they probably have the best chase system I've seen. They've got rules for mass battles. A lot of those things that come up a lot of uh, in major tabletop games, and sometimes it's usually say, hey, GM, figure it out. They figured it out for you, and you can tweak it to the setting that you're running in. So shout-outs to them. Super customizable. You can pretty much pick up a little, uh, little bit of tweaking, and they give you the guidelines on how to tweak, how to build your own races, how to build your own perks and edges and all of that. Uh, so it just gives you the tools uh, to be able to do that. And another cool thing with that, 
is like they've got a whole bunch of settings they sell officially uh, with the system, uh, Pinnacle, uh, and also on Drive Through RPG and all the other uh, kind of sites you can go through and buy uh, different game systems. There's so many fan made and creator made uh, settings and features along with the Savage Worlds. I think they probably have outside of 5e. If I had to hazard a guess, they probably have the most. Uh, maybe probably maybe out Pathfinder. But definitely their top three, in my opinion, which is how much is out there for different creators that you can sell and pick up and have exactly what you're looking for. Uh, they even have like a Ninja Turtles like variant using Savage Worlds, which is like crazy. Uh, so yeah, customize, custom, custom ability, and just so much fan-made creator content that you can just really find exactly what you're looking for without having to spend too much time. So amazing on that slide. Shout out to Pinnacle. Yeah, those are the seven games we did, and each one I kind of like I learned a little bit something from. Uh, and definitely, as you see with my big three behind me, I got some favorites. Really, you'll be seeing more of these games in the future if you watch my actual plays, especially Blades in the Dark. I wanted to get back in that one. That one, I, I truly had a blast with that system. Uh, and just shout outs all around for their, their creators, their publishers. Uh, just really had a lot of fun. And along with those two, because each time I did a game of the month, we ran a stream. Uh, and seven people won uh, cop PDF copies of each of these systems so they could go through and play and hopefully bring it to their tables too uh, to be able to kind of go through and uh, have some fun with it. And shout out to Shalal. Uh, she won two or three. Uh, I know she won Coyote and Crow, and I think she won Blades of Dark. And I think there's a third one I'm forgetting. Uh, so she's been very lucky with those raffles. Uh, so shout outs. Uh, and if you're watching now, drop a comment and see if you've, let us know if you've played any of them too, because uh, it was definitely cool to see you at the streams. Uh, and I'm glad you got to bring home some of those books too. Uh, but overall, had a blast. 2023 is going to be similar. We're sticking with our Game of the Month format. We're always going to be giving away a copy of the PDF because truly one of the big missions of this channel is to get more people playing TTRPGs. And I think giving out copies of the books and systems so they can go through and read it and hopefully bring it to their players is probably the best way to do that. It helped me get out of my 5e bubble, so I want to bring other people outside and seeing how many cool TTRPGs are out there that just may not be getting the love and support they deserve. So stay tuned. Stop. Uh, keep following. Drop a like. Subscribe if you haven't as well uh, because yeah, this is going to be continuing on uh, another thing I want to say is some upcoming content uh, I'm going to be doing this Tuesday, uh, the 27th, I believe. Uh, I'm going to be doing uh, another Strider mode for One Ring, uh, bringing back my PC and going through some more Middle Earth adventures. Uh, Wednesday, we're dropping that CopCon video for Lancer, uh, so that'll be on YouTube. Uh, and then Saturday, we're going to do that How to Learn a New TTRPG video. So stay tuned. We've got some amazing content coming for the rest of December. Uh, the January, we're kicking it back off. We're in a new game of the month. The one I was hoping for, and I'll give us, uh, I was hoping to have my book for Avatar Legends. I won't have that to January probably. So that'll probably be our February game of the month. Uh, I don't know what January is going to be yet, but stay tuned. We'll figure that out uh, and get some cool content out there. But overall, thank you again for your support. Uh, we've grown so much. So many videos, likes, and subscribes. I just truly appreciate it. Uh, definitely, if you're new to the channel, drop a like, drop a subscribe. We're coming through each month with some cool content. Uh, definitely a great way to learn what's out there in the TTRPG space. Uh, but overall, thank you. I hope you all have a Merry Christmas or a great holiday, whatever you're celebrating. We need some peace and quiet if you're not celebrating anything. Uh, but definitely, thanks for watching. And till next time, crew.